Happy Friday, happy day, whatever you are on lockdown. It's day 25 for us here in the UK. And happy World Malbec Day. I didn't know it was Malbec Day. I did know it was Friday, but I didn't know it was Malbec Day. And what I have is just one of the heaviest bottles in the world. It's empty and it's heavier actually than I think most uh, full wine bottles. Um, this is the Cavillier Los Andes Grand Malbec 2014 from the Val de Uco in Mendoza, Argentina. Hefty 15.5% alcohol. That's going to be interesting to see how that's handled. Um, it's the only Malbec I had in the house. I couldn't go out and obviously and buy a Malbec at the last minute to um, to put on for this Malbec day. Um, it's the, I bought a case about two years ago. Um, one of them I gave away, one of the bottles a couple of months ago. And um, I've been sort of resisting temptation because uh, I know that this is a, uh, well, from, from what I know about the wine, I think perhaps it potentially needs a couple more years, maybe, yeah, at least a few more years. Um, there's a lot of care taken in uh, the vineyards, uh, in, in the cellar here. Head winemaker, or overseeing winemaker at least, is uh, Michel Roland, who's obviously well known for being involved in many of the world's finest wines. It's got 95 points from Tim Atkin, 94 from James Suckling, this vintage. Uh, it was actually a very good vintage, very good to outstanding vintage. There wasn't actually much that went on in that vintage that would upset the vintage. I think they had some rain, heavy rain in February, so they managed to defoliage the, the, uh, the vines and uh, protect, it had the wind blowing through the fruits and, and uh, they all dried up, there's no problem. So I'm expecting this to be pretty good. There, is 18 months in barrel aging 100% French oak but more interesting than that fermentation takes place in barrel as well so we should see a lot of oak on this wine um, so I'm excited to see all that oak all these uh, all, all this alcohol what's it going to be like um, we have the Bordeaux influence so you might recognize the label that's very much like Chateau Le Croc and Lierville Poiferi that's because it's owned by the same family the Cavellier family um, let's see what this is going to be like, I guess. Um, what would you expect from a Mendoza Malbec? So 75% of all uh, Malbecs in Argentina come from Mendoza, um, but they come in a range of different styles. And over the past 10 years, there's been a sort of new uh, guard of uh, winemakers who started to experiment with um, different elevations and uh, all kinds of different winemaking techniques that, that now create a, a range of different wines. So there's not one homogenous overall Malbec style, but you could say um, the grape is pretty similar in some ways with its natural characteristics to a Merlot. So you can have plum fruit, blackberry, uh, you can see chocolate, um, obviously with, with the um, use of oak very frequent with Malbec, you're going to get baking spice, vanilla, these sort of things. And I, I have a feeling this is going to be pretty typical, um, typical to that kind of more old, old fashioned style, not old fashioned, it's only 10, 20 years ago, but regular style of uh, Malbec that maybe we've been used to drinking for some time. Um, this wine though um, is from the best um, grapes that they've picked within the uh, Cavillier family um, domains vineyards and uh, obviously it's 100% Malbec. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so very, very super dense, dark, finger disappearingly so purple. I can't see anything through that. That is the black hole of Mendoza. Okay, so on the nose, So the wines, it's true for both Argentina and Chile, I think you've got these really pure, clean fruit aromas that come through. It's very, very pronounced, very rich, very vibrant fruit. I get a real sense of like a dark plum jam, as well as um, the typical kind of note of blackberries. There's certainly the influence that it's very, it's very dark. It's kind of a bit like Christmas cake as well. That kind of dried dark fruits. There's certainly um, you, you can find the, the oak is very prevalent. We've got the vanilla. We've got the sweet tobacco. It's, it's a really beautiful nose, and it's not that dissimilar to the Poyac that we had. Oh, I had it. You were there, hopefully, um, two weeks ago. Okay, maybe it's the Bordelais uh, influence, but it's. Um, Certainly Bordeaux-esque on the nose, anyway, on the palate. It's 
So all that luscious dark fruit, really, really prevalent, very silky smooth, super fine tannins. Again, that pure driven crisp fruit goes all the way through the entire experience from the attack to the mid palate. The acidity is pretty good. Um, this is very, very fresh for a 15% alcohol, 15.5% alcohol wine. Um, medium to full bodied. This has been in the decanter for two hours. I think that, that's, that's certainly been of help. But this is um, it's really nice, long finish. I think what really strikes you is just that, that clean, crisp, fresh note. Uh, uh, well, well the, the freshness of the fruit, the acidity that does manage to come through, and you're completely not overwhelmed by the alcohol. The alcohol is not invasive at all, which is, I think, the whole parcel altogether is really quality. Um, actually, it's really nice now. Um, I, I thought maybe it would take a few more years. I think it will improve a little bit over the coming years. But I think you can drink that now. Very Bordelais on the nose. Changes to be more New World on the, um, on the palate. Uh, at $59, wine.com, £59, Lane Sandeman. Uh, yeah, is it 95, 94 and 95.1, I think, is, is, is absolutely correct. So, happy Malbec Day. Happy day, whatever you are, of uh, lockdown. Um, I don't have a question, so just feel free to say anything. <laughs>